Back at it again. What's good, YouTube? Your boy, Ann B. Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about my step one experience, my USMLE step one experience, and how I was able to go from a 170 in February to a 250 eight weeks later. And I'm not going to necessarily be talking about how I specifically studied. I'm going to have a whole different video on like what exactly I did. So make sure you subscribe so you you know, know when that comes out. I really just want to share my experience just so I can like motivate those who may be going through it and feel like they're not capable because their scores are telling them one thing. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and start. So my school makes us take um, a mandatory CBSC, which is like a practice step exam at the end of our preclinical years. And you have to score a certain benchmark for them to even allow you to take the exam. And I, I'm, I was right at that benchmark, so I was good. You feel me? But that is a one, I got, I was like a 170. You feel me? And I really wasn't too pressed about the score because I hadn't really been studying like four step or I haven't been really prepping for step. So it's like whatever. Um, but I did know that I knew my goal was a 240 plus simply because like what I want to do is pretty competitive. So, you know, I really wasn't stressed. I you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to be all right. So I took seven weeks in total to study for step. And, I, and I, I think it's good to put into context or set the background information. My school allows us like three months to take it. So a lot of people take like 10 to 12 weeks, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't want to necessarily do that because I talked to a lot of upperclassmen. They're like, you, six, six to eight weeks is where you need to be pushing. So I chose seven. It was in the middle. Um, so my first two weeks of studying for step, you know, I was doing more like organ-based reviews. So I reviewed cardio and heme the first week, renal and respiratory the second week. And uh, how, we, how I took my practice exams, me and my boy wanted to take a practice exam every week. Simply just to see if what we're doing was working. And what I noticed, like my first practice exam I took, I, I got like a 190. I still wasn't stressed because, you know, it was one week. Um, and you know, it was just like, okay, that's one week. That's cool. But one, one thing that did bother me is like the material that I, I had studied and reviewed like in depth that whole week, I was still like missing a lot of questions on it. You know what I mean? It would have been one thing if I was like, you know, smashing every cardio and heme question, but I was still missing those questions and everything else obviously was trash because I hadn't looked at it in a minute. Um, but week two, that really pissed me off my second practice exam because when I then added re uh, renal and uh, respiratory, my score only went up like eight points. And I was like, okay, this isn't, my ret my rate of returns is not, you know, coming in how I like it. And I was, again, still missing questions on cardio, heme, renal, and respiratory. And I was like, okay, what I'm doing is not working. And I'm starting to stress out because, you know, five weeks to come and I'm not making progress. And I'm like, all right, like, I can't continue like this. Um, so one day I go to the gym and one of my boys, one of like the superstars at our school, you know, my guy was already like in the 240s, 250s. I was like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, how are you eating? You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you doing this? Because my mentality is like, I'm not stupid. You feel me? So I got to figure out like what I need to do to make it happen. And he told me, hey, man, forget that whole reviewing nonsense. Like, you've already learned the material. You already know the material. Like, start doing questions. He was like, I'm doing like 120 questions a day. Da -da -da. I was like, you know what? I bet I'm gonna start doing questions. And that was like a Monday at the gym. So let's say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I started just doing questions, 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 questions. And I took a, you know, the week three practice exam, the, the, the third one I took, I got like a 219. I was like, okay, bet, you know, I'm making, I'm making jumps now. Like, okay, four days of questions made my score jump like 21 points. And I'm like, bet, like we in this whole, like, let's, you know, let's make it happen. So I did change my whole approach. I said, forget the whole reviewing nonsense. I'm just going to do questions on you, and just start doing all random, all time questions, 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 sets of 40. How I did it was just basically like um, I was set up a random set of 40, take a five minute break, then do another set, set of 40 and then have like 80 questions to review. Because if I did 40 and then try to review 40, I wouldn't have enough energy to do another 40. Does that make sense? So I just front loaded, got my 80 in the way or, and after like, you know, week three, week four, week five, I started doing like 120 because I just started pushing through, get all my questions out the way and then, you know, review them all later. All that is good and dandy, but my score really wasn't like moving in the way that I needed it to move. So the next practice exam after that, I took U World One. And if, if anybody like has been on Student Doctor Network or Reddit, uh, uh, USMLE, yada yada yada, like you'll hear like, okay, um, the U World practice exams overestimate where you are. So the next practice exam I took, you were when I got 237, which I took with a grain of salt because I was like, okay, it's an over predictor anyhow. Like, let me see what the rest of my MBMEs are telling me where I am, what kind of guy I am. So 
The next NBME I took, I got 225, and I was like, okay, that's probably where I am. You know, I'm not stressing. That's week like five. It's like, okay, like I know at a certain point I'm gonna like break through that wall and like you know start making good scores. Now, ten days to go to my exam, y'all. Ten days to go to my exam. Uh, I'm taking NBME. I believe it's 17. And again, 225. And at this point, I'm freaking out. I'm just like, all right, this is not, this is not the type of guy I need to be. You feel me? Like, it's one of those things where because your score de determines like what you can and can't be, and you only have one chance. It's a very stressful time in your life. Does that make sense? So like, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, well, I know I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna be good. Like, it's not just about passing. It's about eating. You know what I'm saying? And I needed to see a two four something just so I don't necessarily close doors on myself. Um, and I'm freaking out, like super stressed, like I, I can't sleep. I, I stopped going to the gym just because I was like, every second of my life, I was like, I need to become like a raw guy. I need to be raw, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't know how to be raw. I'm damn near reading first aid in my sleep, guys. That's how sick it was. And I was just like, bro, like, I don't know if I, I was, I was really contemplating on pushing back my exam. Like our school gives us three months to study, like I said. And I really didn't want to push my test back because at a certain time when you push your test back, you start to forget things you've already learned. I was just like, man. And I was, I was tired of studying. I was just like, I don't want to push it back. So I decided, okay, I'm going to take another practice exam with six days to go. And that exam was going to determine whether I push my test back or not. Because, you know, if you push your test back within five days, it's like double the cost. So six days to go, I'm like, all right, this is going to be the test. And let's see what's, see what's popping. You know what I'm saying? I, I, that was Euro 2, which people say is supposed to be like the best indicator of where you are. And I took Euro 2, I got 239. So I got six days to go, I'm at 239. I'm like, you know what? If you give me six days, I'm gonna get one point. Like, I'm not gonna be the type of guy to not get one point. I'm gonna get it. Like, go grab that thing a bit, let's go. So two days later, after I took Euro 2, I took NBA Me 19. And the reason I took Euro 2 to be like the test that determined whether I push it or not is because NBA Me 19's curve is crazy, supposedly. And like on Student Doctor Network, they're like, hey, don't even stress that test. Like, don't even take it if you're, you're, not, you're not a confident person because it'll shatter your confidence, yada, yada, yada. So I took NBA Me 19. Two days later, I got a 230. I was just like, man, forget it. Like, I don't even care what this test says I'm taking this out. And from like the day that I decided, okay, I'm gonna take this exam to get that one point, what I decided to do was do a power, power read through through first aid. And what I was doing, I was basically making my own rapid review, high year rapid review. Uh, one of my friends is like, you know, if you read first aid, there's a lot of Scooby snack facts, you know what I'm saying? Just little tidbits that like seem random, but that's how they differentiate the dudes in the 230s from the 240s to the 250s, you know what I'm saying? They're not gonna ask you, do you know, what everybody else is, and they're gonna ask you some super random thing about it. And it's all really in first day. So I started making my own, you know, my own little Scooby snack fact, whatever, whatever. So there the test comes and I'm like, you know what? Like, I know I've put in my work. I know I've put in the time. I know I've put in the energy. Heavenly Father, just take control. You know what I mean? And I take the exam and I walk out the exam feeling like, I felt prepared. I felt like, okay, well, obviously I knew there's some things I didn't know. And there's some things that I was down to two, but I answered confidently. And there was things that were, come on, come on, I need that. Give me that a bit. Let's eat. You know what I mean? But I didn't really know how to feel leaving the exam because I've never seen a score that I was proud of. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen a score that was like in my range. I've never seen a score that, you know, made sense. One of my classmates actually told me when I was kind of like, you know, venting to him about it. He was like, hey, I don't recommend you taking the exam until you see a 240 because just the nature of the game, like if you don't get that score, like residency programs aren't even looking at your application. But I was just like, man, I'll get that one point. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you need a, a RBI single, like I'm, I'm gonna move, the, I'm gonna move the runner from first to second. Like, let's get it. Anywho, like I said, I, I, I didn't feel defeated walking out the exam, and you know, post, post, post test, I was still stressed. You know, I had what's called PTQD post test question disorder. You know what I'm saying? You're just thinking of every question, like what I got right, what I got wrong. But I will say because I was confident on my exam, even if I confidently answered something wrong, it didn't mess up my psych. You know what I mean? I was just like, I, I know I don't know this. Let's keep moving, you know? Or it has to be this play odds. They have 280 questions. It's not gonna waste it on this useless tad fact. This is most common. Let's keep moving, whatever, whatever. You know, to God be the glory. I get my score back in the 250, you know? And, and the whole time I'm just thinking like, damn, like the over predictors say I'm this type of guy and the representation, like the good ones say I'm this type of guy. So I didn't even know, I didn't know how to feel. I make this video to, just to like, one, let y'all know like, I, I can't, I, I can't curse. 
what a practice exam says. Think about it like this, right? Every question that you see before your real test is adding ammo to your artillery. Does that make sense? Like you're adding bullets to your gun. And step one is the, you know, the, the browser or the, the demagogue, the final level of the video game. You know what I'm saying? And if you do enough questions, you'll be familiar with enough things where you've put so many bullets in your gun. And it's like, all right, man, just keep shooting type of thing. If you understand that analogy. Um, also, like, don't get discouraged because your practice exams aren't just, you know, rock star, like solid. Like the real deal is what matters. Like I always told myself, I always kept kind of kept it with a grain of salt. Like, I'm glad that I'm missing making these stupid mistakes. Like, you know, picking the wrong of the two questions on a practice exam. I'm, I'm glad that like I'm seeing how, what kind of stupid mistakes I'm making. Cause it's better to make the stupid, stupid mistake on a practice exam than to make it on the real thing. You know what I mean? You have to go into that test with all confidence because it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a scary test. You know what I'm saying? It, it's so important and it holds so much weight. So, you know, you just have to understand and trust yourself that I've done the work and I know that I put in my time. I put in the energy. You feel me? Like off season, I'm in the gym every day. At a certain point, the first game of the season, you know what I'm saying? If that fullback wants to really meet you in the hole, knowing you're the linebacker, you're going to smack that guy. You feel me? So it's just one of those things where you just have to trust yourself and be confident in your abilities. You know, like no practice exam correlated what I was supposed to get. You know what I mean? I don't even blame, I don't even like give like myself the credit. Like I, I, like, I know God legitimately is looking out for me. Like I said in my first video, like the blessings that I've had so far, I don't deserve it. However, if you are currently struggling, you know what I mean? Like stay positive, stay motivated because at the end of the day, it's better to make dumb mistakes when it doesn't matter versus on the real thing. And when you go into the real thing, you have to tell yourself like, all right, I've already got my dumb mistakes out of the way. Let's eat a bit. Anywho, like I said, stay tuned, subscribe for that like in detail video on how I study for step and how I use uh, my, how I use Euro, first day, Pathoma, Sketchy. Um, and kind of like what I would do differently if I was to do it again. So you don't miss that video and you know, we keep eating. It's Ambi. Stay humble, stay hungry. Let's get it. I can't